It's called bitter and better. And the only difference between bitter and better is the I in it. I knew Jerry Falwell was, was, was pulling something. I just didn't know what. Are you channeling Faye Baker? Yeah, hi. I'm a wild gal. <laughs> We had a theme of our show, and the theme of our show uh, on PTL was you can make it. And I am a you can make it person. And I just believe that anybody can make it. And if they, the Bible says that when you fall down, you'll rise again. And I believe we might have fallen down, but we're going to rise again. <laughs> I can assure you, Jim and Tammy, someday will be helping people again. And thank God the sun is going to shine again. Well, you know, the people that stole PTL, literally, a con game was per perpetrated to Jim and Tammy. These people w wouldn't even allow me to go back to clean my own desk out. And so, we're, you know, it's a strange thing to be cut off from something you built. We've been like people without a country since this has happened. We didn't read the papers, but occasionally it just intrigues me so much <laughs> that I have to buy it, and I know why they get people to buy it now, because I bought it, I have bought it myself to yeah. find out what I had done. And I would read these things, and I, I no basis for them. Jim and Tammy to open Healing Shrine in Arkansas. Well, we had no plans to open a Healing Shrine. I raised a chicken from the dead, and I'm scared to death of chickens. The only chicken I get near is Kentucky Fried. <laughs> and I understand they sell some, was it $2 billion worth of chicken? Our sales this year will exceed $2 billion, yes. I mean, it was a, they put it, we're on comedy shows. In fact, we were on, uh, what was that show with the, the gals down, one of my favorite programs, the... Oh, yeah, the... The, the gals the down in Florida. Ladies. Hey, just because you put your makeup on with a butter knife doesn't make you Tommy Baker. <laughs> the Golden, Golden Girls, Girls. Yes. <laughs> I just laugh with it. I think it's fun. It's fun. Everybody else laughs and I laugh, too. It's okay. <laughs> I just want our partners to know we have repented and we need their emotional and financial support now more than ever. I went down to the garment district the other day and I saw and a group of young people happened to see me and hi Tammy, you know, started screaming. And I imagine before that little session was over, I had probably signed 50. 60 autographs. I mean, I signed hands, I signed shopping bags, I signed little pieces of paper, I signed any, what, anything you can sign, I think we signed it. We've always uh, had a heart for hurting people, but until you've hurt this bad yourself, you never really know that every single day when they get up, it's another day to hurt all day long. God help us. God speak to your people. The God loose these finances God in the name of me. Jesus. I, I want to die. I, in fact, for months and months and months, every hour of the day, that's all I would think about is dying and praying to die. The hurt, the pain was beyond what I could say in these few minutes on this program. It's just, it's beyond comprehension. And the hurt of, of uh, being totally smeared and destroyed. Well, I have two little words, Rob, that, that I minister about in prison. It's called bitter and better. And the only difference between bitter and better is the I in it. Jim and Tammy Faye Baker and the continuing saga of the PTL Club have taken on the irresistible dimensions of a national soap opera. You know, the scriptures say that you're not to, to defend yourself and you're supposed to let God defend you. And so we were sitting back, you know, praying, talking to our minister friends, reading the Bible, waiting for God to defend us. And so uh, the thing kept going on and on and on. It is, in its own way, as awful, as fascinating, and as impossible to ignore as a gigantic traffic accident. And I talked to some of my minister friends, and they finally said, Jim, we think you ought to, you ought to go out. And uh, we picked Ted Koppel because we felt that it was live. The money went into a lot of buildings. The buildings and the, the yeah, yeah. And, the, and, and the pay for our airtime and the light bill. And your bonuses That's, and your and salaries bonuses, and right, the bonuses right. of, I You're mean, for right. example. Well, we and, felt and he was a fair, fair man. We felt he was fair. And so that's, fair. that's the reason we did that. Because we don't mind hard questions, Rob. That's not it. The truth is the truth. And so, you know, we're willing to tell the truth no matter how hard the questions are. 
I think it would be fun to do commercials. And I think the makeup companies are losing a big thing <laughs> by not asking me to do commercials for their makeup. <laughs> and, uh, and so I hope to, be, we, we both hope to get back on television and do what we, what we feel God has called us to do. Do you find any openings for her? Yeah. <laughs> Leading our news is Jim Baker's fall from grace. The former TV preacher has plummeted from bright lights and luxury to the bare four walls of a jail cell. I don't think he was treated fairly. I think Jim had too much power. The last year we were at Heritage USA, six million people came through the gates. I think the government got nervous, one person being able to draw that many people, and there, plus there were millions and millions that watched the PTL television network. The now bankrupt and closed PTL vacation resort stands as a reminder of the bizarre mushrooming scandal that racked the multi-billion dollar religious broadcasting industry, setting off the bitter 1987 holy wars among television evangelists. I think they set out to get Jim through Jerry Falwell because I asked Jim not to sign Heritage USA over to Jerry Falwell. I felt in my spirit it was the wrong thing to do. And I knew in my spirit, like many women do, we call it a sixth answer or uh, intuition. I knew Jerry Falwell was, was, was pulling something. I just didn't know what. But I think he was a victim of his own fear more than anything because it could not have happened had not they frightened him to the point of just giving up. But we are friends and we can talk and I think that's very nice. And I, I wish all divorces could be like that. Why not? You know, why fight and be bitter and be cruel to one another? That does nothing for anyone. I had colon cancer, and the only thing it is doing to me is making me very sad and very nervous at this point. I do trust God, and so God helps me, give, it gives me a peace to trust in God, knowing that all things do work together for good and that God does care about us and knows the situation we're in. I, I feel very, very good, and I'm here to tell people today, don't be afraid of cancer. Um, it doesn't have to beat you. You can beat it. But you've got to keep the right attitude and you've got to keep a happy spirit. Keep those endorphins building up the immune system. <laughs> Drew, you remember Mrs. Bobak, Mimi's mother? Call me Tammy. Well, I'm Mimi's mom, which I think is fun because somebody finally cast me right. I took advantage of all this makeup for once. Smart, don't you think? <laughs> you must be Mimi's mother. That's right. How did you know? Well... I think it's the eyes. <laughs> I can't understand. What did we do? Why do a documentary about something that is so painful? Why go back? I was very grateful to be able to tell my side and, uh, and have the other side shown too and let the, give the people a chance to make up their mind because the American people are intelligent. Instead of languishing in the desert, Tammy decided to get back in front of the cameras. So you've never done pictures without those eyelashes? No, and I never will because that's my trademark. And the wonderful thing for me about doing the documentary was the fact that there are two sides to every story. And uh, so many times the public are, uh, they don't make up their own minds. They just take the, the side of what they read and they don't realize that there's another side. I hope that they will come away from the documentary at least giving me a chance. At least saying, they're, saying may, maybe, may, maybe it, it was different than we thought. When you get my age and when you've been through the, the, life the way I have, nothing really shocks you anymore. You sort of become shockproof. You know, I went through things that would have killed a lot of people and could have killed me had I not had my faith in God and had a good firm foundation under me. I uh, got on a little pill called Ativan and I initially uh, used the little pill to fly with. And uh, to fly with, <laughs> to, I mean on airplanes. <laughs> And what it would do, it just settle my tummy down, you know. And, uh, and as things got uh, progressively uh, busier and busier at Heritage USA the last year we were there, I began to get, have hyperventilation problems. And I found that that little Ativan would calm down that hyperventilation. But what I didn't realize was that Ativan has an afterlife and it builds up and builds up in you until when you take one, you're actually, you actually have the remnants of, of other pills that are in you. And I was unable to uh, get rid of the habit by myself. 
and so uh, I went to Betty Ford for help. It was a very low point for me because to admit that you're addicted to something, uh, I didn't think I had an addictive type of personality. I'm just so grateful I made it. You know, there's a saying, you can't go forward looking in the rearview mirror. I think I'm <laughs> older and wiser. <laughs> um, I'm more careful, more cautious. I've always been an outgoing person. My life was wide open to everyone. I, I trusted everyone, I loved everyone, and, I was, and uh, I'm much more careful these days. I love to laugh, I love to have fun, and I don't take anything too seriously. I think if you don't laugh over things, you'll cry. <laughs> and, and I'm a person full of laughter. All right. Got it? Okay. Got <laughs> Get it, got it, good. <laughs> okay, honey.